Hello friends, welcome to the video tutorial of C programming and in this video we are going to study how to use pointers with one dimensional. So let us take an array for an example. So consider this array, okay, here I declare one integer type of array of size 5, okay, and as well as I put some element also. So this is the element at 0 position, 1st, 2nd and so on. So you might remember that while studying the introduction to one dimensional array, I told you that for array, contiguous block of memory is allocated. Contiguous block of memory means what? Continuous block of memory is allocated. Okay. Means what is the meaning of this part? All the elements reside side by side in a memory. Means consider that the memory location of this zeroth element array is 2005 okay since we are considering integer addresses or integer type of data we know that integer acquires two bytes of memory and again if I consider 32 bit machine so definitely it will take a two bytes but if it is 64 bit machine then it will take a four bytes so here I am considering that every integer acquires how many bytes of memory two bytes of memory okay so as I said, contiguous block of memory means what? The next element is stored in the immediate next location. Means the element at first position is stored at 2007 location. Then next one is at 2009 location. Then 2011 and 2013. Okay. So your array name actually represents the base address. What your array name represents? Array name represents base address. See, whenever you say x of i or if you say x of 0, this both these statements represent ith element in the array. ith element or ith value of array. Whereas, if you just say x which is nothing but a name of array what it represents it represents the base address now what is the base address base address means the address of the zeroth element to get the address of any simple variable what we use we use address of operator okay we already studied this part while studying the pointer and it is specified by this ampersand sign. So suppose consider that I have one variable a and I want to know the address of this. So what will I say? Ampersand a. So what this statement does, does it will gives me the memory location of a where it is stored. Whereas in case of array, I need not to use ampersand or address of operator. I just have to specify the name of my array which gives me a address. Now, let me rub this. Okay. Now, suppose I want to operate my array with a pointer. Okay. So, for that I have to store this address somewhere. Somewhere means what? Definitely in a pointer variable. Okay. Where we can store the address? We know the definition of pointer. What is pointer? Pointer is a variable that stores the address of another variable. I already explained this part. If you are not aware of this part, please watch the video of pointer and I will update the link of pointer video in the description below. Okay. So, we know that pointer is a variable that stores the address of another variable. So, to store this address, I need one pointer variable. Now, my array elements or my array is of type integer. So, my pointer should be of type what? integer so let us call it as p star p okay so this is a declaration of pointer now here i'll say p is equal to x what i said p is equal to x now what is the meaning of this p is also a variable it also has some memory location but it stores the address of array base address of array so currently p is pointing here currently p is pointing here to this memory location i hope you understand this 
okay now what we are going to do we are going to fetch the value of array element using this pointer variable okay now for that we have to use value at address operator value at address operator and we already studied this operator it is specified by asterisk sign it is also called as indirection operator what is it called as indirection operator also now to get a value at this memory location i have to use i have to say star p so what this star p does what is p p is what 2005 and if i say star of this or asterisk of this what is the meaning of this value at address operator so what is the value at this address the value at this address is what 50 so this gives me what 50 now but we only get the first element of the array right but suppose i want to get the next element of the array so what you can do you can increment your pointer okay so when you increment it what happens what is the current value of pointer what is the current value of p current value of p is what 2005 if i increment it definitely you, you guess the answer that answer is 2006 but remember this thing that we declare our pointer of type what integer okay and since integer acquires two bytes and if i increment my pointer variable in that case it will increment by 2 in that case it will increment by what 2 okay so the new value of my pointer variable is what it is 7 so remember this thing the increment or decrement of pointer depends on the data type memory requirement so if it is uh, if your pointer variable sorry if your pointer is storing the address of integer and if you increment it it will increment by 2 bytes if it is of type float it will increment by 4 bytes and definitely it will differ for 64 bit and 32 bit machine also okay so that's that is the reason why we declare the pointer of that type i hope you got this okay by studying a pointer i just told you that pointer should be of a same type of your variable but that is the reason behind this if you want to perform any arithmetic on a pointer so it very much depend on your data type now what is the new value of your p 2007 now in this case if you say asterisk p so what is the meaning of this asterisk 2007 and what is the answer what is the answer answer is 25 so in this way you can increment the p n times okay now let us see one more part basically it is not a good programming practice to move your base address okay means first of all your p is pointing here then after your p is pointing here when you increment it it will point here okay so it is not a good programming practice to increment or to move from your base address okay so what we can do instead of writing this statement what i can say i can say p plus i asterisk of p plus i and my i value will vary from 0 to n minus 1 my i value will vary from 0 to i minus 1 so now my p is currently pointing to base address only it is having value 2005 we are not going to increment the value of p now if consider that value of i is 0 okay so you will say asterisk of 2005 plus 0 which gives you 2005 asterisk of 2005 so what is the value at that location 50 now if i consider value of i as 2 okay and if i say star of p plus i which is star of 2005 plus 2 see when you add 2 to it 
So according to the logic of integer, see here also when we increment it, it by 1, it get incremented by 2. So here I am adding 2 to it. So I will get definitely what? 2009. Okay. And what is the value at 2009 location? It is 11. It is what? 11. So it is quite easy. Okay. So what we can say, let us switch to next page. So what we can say, if I say P of I, it is very much equivalent to asterisk of P plus I, which is also equivalent to asterisk of I plus P, which is also equivalent to I of P. This statement is also allowed. So all these statements are what? Equivalent. And what this statement gives you? This statement gives you ith element of array. And condition is that your i value should be valid. Okay. So if you are operating your array or manipulating your array using pointer, what you will say? You will say asterisk of p plus i. Okay. And we already studied this notation. Okay. So always remember that your array name points to the base address. That is the new thing we studied. And we can directly get the address of array by just specifying its name. We do not have to use address of operator. So this is the statement of assigning the address to your pointer variable. Then we studied one more thing that if you increment the pointer, it increment by your data types requirement. Okay, means if my pointer is of integer type, it will increment by 2 bytes. If my pointer is of type float, it will increment by 4, four bytes and so on. Again, we studied one more part. It is not a good programming practice to move your base address because again, if you need it, then uh, and if it is lost, then definitely your all data going to be lost. So it is not a good practice to move your base address. So for that, we studied this notation okay so i hope you understand this in next video we are going to study dynamic memory allocation for one dimensional array so if you have any doubt definitely you can write it to me thank you